Okay. I'll take the two fish right now, please. Coming in. All right. Looks great. Perfectly cooked. A little broth. The broth smells perfect. Just going to give it a little touch of oil just to make it a little bit richer. Look at that thing. That is right on. You know, I love a dish like this because you've got this perfect melt-away piece of poached fish, little delicate noodles, apple, fennel, mushrooms, great textures, great flavors, really wonderful. But you know what? This is really simple to make. In fact, we should make this right now. Come on. I love the idea of taking a variety of ingredients, making a broth, using the broth to cook some fish and maybe some noodles, and then that becomes my flavoring agent in which I serve the noodles and the fish and everything else. I'm going to start by making a court bouillon or a small delicate broth. I'll take a little bit of butter and I've got carrot, some onion, celery, some leek, fennel, a little bit of apple. I think it's great to get some sweetness going. Some mushrooms that will provide an earthy characteristic to a preparation like this. And really, I just need to let this sweat and saute lightly for oh, a minute or two and just release the aromatic flavor of these vegetables. So we'll get this going here. The thing is, aside from picking up all the beautiful flavor from the vegetables, the court bouillon then picks up additional flavor from whatever you're going to cook in it. So we start with our vegetables. We let them just sweat and, and give off some of their nice fragrance, their aroma. Stir them a little bit. I'm not really sauteing them so much as I'm just softening them up and releasing their flavor. This is an optional step. I could start straight away with cold water if I wish, but I, I think this is a nice way to kind of get the flavor coming out. So we're ready to go. I've got some water. We're going to just pour this right on top. Cold water. And really, at this point, we're just going to let it simmer. We can add some bay leaf, a few peppercorns, black peppercorns or white peppercorns. That'll just give it a little bit of heat. I could really take it up and add some chilies if I want a lot of spice to it, but I want this to be very delicate because my salmon is so delicate, I want to really showcase both the flavor of the salmon and the flavor of these aromatic vegetables. Fennel seed to kind of highlight the fennel flavor, and either acid, citrus that is, or something like white wine. This is a Sauvignon Blanc wine, dry. This will provide a nice acidic note going throughout the, the broth. We'll let that go for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, strain it. I have one here that's been going, and this has all this flavor coming out of it. I don't want to let it go too long for fear that maybe I'll overcook the vegetables and really maybe extract some bitterness from the vegetables. But at this point, the vegetables are not really of any use to us. We've taken all the key essential flavor my court bouillon is basically ready, and I can set about the rest of the process here. I'm going to take mushroom, since I, I want to reintroduce the mushroom in the dish. We'll just go ahead and slice this up a little bit. No big deal. I like this to be just cut up into pieces. Nice toothsome bite-sized pieces so that when I'm digging into the dish, I've got different textures. I've got the soft fleshed melt-away fish. I've got these earthy, just nice bite mushrooms that I can try. I'm going to take a fennel bulb here. This is kind of fun. A lot of times when you go to the supermarket, you'll see something like this, and what do you do with it? Well, these fronds are really very useful. We can save these for a garnish. For the most part, it's the bulb on the fennel that's used. We can save the stalks. Sometimes I'll actually braise these stalks and use them for a piece of meat, something like that. But it's, it's really the bulb that's got most of the flavor, and it's the easiest part to work with. It's not quite as fibrous as the stalks either. So we're going to cut this down. And it, this can be cut anyway. I'm going to cut out this sort of center portion, which is a little bit firmer, not always so useful. If we're going to braise it for a long period of time, I might go ahead and use the center portion. Really, I just want to quickly saute this, so I'm going to cut this into a smaller cut so it cooks quicker. So I'll, take, I'll just peel a few pieces off here, and I'll be able to quickly cut this into a, a julienne or really any shape that I want. And I'm going to saute the fennel and the mushrooms together. And as that's happening, I'll be able to sort of put together the entire dish. So I've got my saute pan on, just a pinch of butter. I don't need too much here. I can add my fennel to the pan, my mushrooms. And we'll just keep, let this go for a moment. Let it sit over here. 
And in the meantime, I can work on flavoring my broth. Let me get that right up to temperature. Since I've got the, the fennel, and I want to reintroduce that sort of anise flavor, that very delicate anise perfume, a great way to do that is by adding some tarragon. Get it in here. It'll begin to give, release its volatile oil and give off that beautiful flavor. We'll add some salt at this time. We can always adjust the seasoning at the end right before we serve it. A twist of pepper. And I'll try this just to see if we're on the right track here. And I think that's pretty good. I can taste all the, I can taste the vegetables. I can taste all the flavors. Keep this sauteed here. Turn the heat down just a little bit. I've got some pasta, some noodles that I've cooked off and then shocked in ice water to stop the cooking, tossed in a little bit of olive oil. That can be done in advance, ready to go. I've got my fish ready to go, salmon, just little pieces. You can ask the, the fish butcher to, to cut them down to whatever size. You can buy a bigger piece and cut it down yourself. This dish is actually great with shrimp. We could take some shrimp meat or even some chicken, do the exact same process. But salmon works really well because poached salmon is so succulent, it just melts away and it's a great method to poach it in this fennel broth. So we're going to go ahead and season this. Salt, pepper. Some of this will come off in the poaching broth. That's okay, we can re-season it. We'll drop these pieces in here. They won't take long to cook, especially keeping in mind that we want to, in a sense, undercook this. We want to leave this medium rare because it's going to keep on going. So we want to sort of time it. When we feel that it's just soft and it may be even seeming a little too raw, We'll pull it out anyway because we want to let it keep on cooking as we assemble the dish. My vegetables are just about done. I can really just reheat my pasta right in the same liquid here. It won't take but a second. Now I'm making a version, I guess you could say, that's an individual portion. I mean, there are two ways to look at food. There's the individual portion or they're serving something platter style or family style. This is just one way to do it. If I were serving more people, I would simply get more fish in the pot, get more pasta in the pot, and, and maybe serve a bowl of pasta on the side, my fish on one platter, my vegetables on another. People could help themselves. But to do this in an individual sort of plated preparation, this is how we're going to go about this. Pasta's in here, warmed through. We're just going to put a little bit in our bowl. Just a little mound, nothing too, too fancy. We're able to go ahead and place a few of our our vegetables in here, they just have a little bit of color. And, you know, what's great is texture. And imagining you've got the, the toothsome al dente pasta, you've got these really nice earthy mushrooms, fennel that's got just a little bit of bite to it, lightly caramelized so we can enjoy its natural sweetness very nicely. And we can check our fish and see how it's doing. I'm sure it's very, very close because it doesn't take long. Yep, it's just on the rare side. So we're going to pull, pull it out here and let it just sit for a moment. This, is, this will be a good opportunity for me to re-season the fish just lightly. And I don't need too much because the broth is seasoned. Just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And I can literally just place my pieces of fish right on top of the noodles here. And you know, we also added apple in the court bouillon. And w one thing is to reintroduce the apple. And since we're going to pour hot broth in here, there's no need for us to really even cook this apple. It's kind of nice to enjoy apple raw anyway, and its sweet sweetness, it's just going to provide a very, very nice note of, of sweet elegance to all of this. So we'll just julienne that a little bit, and I'm just going to strew a few pieces about the bowl. Now you see how quickly this comes together. Once I've, once I've made my court bouillon and cooked my pasta, really the whole plate just comes together in seconds. So I have my salmon with all my ingredients in the bowl. I can go ahead and add some of my broth to this. Great. I'm just going to pour it right on the fish and around the bowl. It'll keep on cooking the fish. And you can just see the, the, this aromatic and very delicate broth just sort of coming off the bowl. We can, if we want, add additional herb. The whole idea of working with one ingredient, getting its flavor, going back later, reintroducing it again, releasing the flavor at the last minute. That volatile oil that exists in the herbs. Beautiful stuff. Just sprinkling it about. 
And you know, we've saved some of the fennel fronds. Really easy to work with. Again, more of that beautiful, delicate anise fennel flavor. Kind of like working with fresh dill, these little frong, fronds. Sprigs of dill. Same sort of thing, although certainly a different flavor. So we'll mince that up. And here we go. We sprinkle it on. Nice colors. Very simple. Very, very uh, festive kind of a, a look here. I've got some olive oil. This is an optional touch if I want to add richness to this dish. I'll just spoon some extra virgin olive oil around. Let it li literally bead in the bowl a little bit on top of the fish itself. And, and we've got some really nice flavors, just very harmonious together here. Kind of a Mediterranean themed dish. The freshness of the apple sort of really giving a nice little burst of last minute flavor. And here I am. So let me go ahead and just take a little bite here. And the mushroom and the fish. Now let's see how that is. Oh yeah, nice and just perfectly, uh, perfectly cooked. A little bit uh, translucent in the center. Very healthy, very tasty. I think we've got the dish. One of my favorite preparations for easy elegance is a smoked fish terrine. I've got a side of smoked salmon here, which is just luscious with its oil coming off. I've cut it into some little strips, very simple. They're the size of this terrine mold. I've lined it with plastic wrap. I'm gonna start now by just laying the fish right into the terrine. A little bit of lemon butter, flavored with lemon and black pepper. I can smear that along the bottom. Just a little thin layer, almost the way you'd coat a piece of toast in the morning. The butter helps give it some flavor, and it helps just bind the terrine together. Continue on with a little more fish, a little more lemon butter. About six or seven pieces here. Up to the top of the mold. Put it in the refrigerator for about two hours, just until the fish sets up with the butter. Take it out. I'm able to cut a piece. I like to leave the plastic wrap on here. It helps me because it's just barely set up. Not a heavy mousse, something very delicate and light. Remove the plastic. And for easy elegance, a great preparation for special dinner. You've got a smoked fish terrine. I spoon a little spicy vinaigrette on or a little Asian flavored sauce. And I've got a great dish. Since we've gone to all the trouble to make this very nice terrine, why don't we give it a presentation that's worthy of the effort that we put into this? We've got this gorgeous salmon terrine with the citrus butter ready to go. Let's cut a slice. My knife glides through this like it's butter. It's so smooth and simple. That's why we keep the plastic on because it's just that delicate. It helps keep it, keep it together. So we're going to take a piece and plate it. The only thing that can, I think, really push this all the way over the edge is something like a beautiful caviar sauce. Let's make a little caviar cream. I have some creme fraiche, which has a very nice sour flavor to it. Not like heavy cream. Not, it's, it's got a richness, but it also has a really nice sour flavor, which is going to help just cut into the terrine ever so slightly, just to, just to kind of tame the terrine a little bit. We're going to just thin this out with water. And then I'm going to add a big heaping gob of caviar. I've got Ocetra caviar. And uh, you can add as much as you want. So let's just spoon it on. This works great as well with salmon roe or trout roe or beluga. But Ocetra is great. And I want to now carefully stir this in, not too vigorously. If I, if I stir too, too firmly, too violently, I'm going to break the delicate eggs, causing the cream to turn a little bit gray. I need to taste this now. There should be enough salt here because of the caviar. But we may want to add a little bit of pepper. So just a twist of pepper right here. And this will be perfect. This is something we'd want to make at the last moment. I don't think we'd want to make this too far in advance because the caviar would begin to sort of uh, release water and break down a little bit. But it just takes a second. We can just stir the caviar in right when we're ready to serve it. We'll just spoon that around the terrine. When you serve this, the guests are just going to go crazy. Just a nice little ring of the Ocetra caviar sauce. If we just rub a little bit of olive oil on that terrine, maybe even just drizzle a couple drops, give it a little, little shine and a little flavor, that'll be perfect. 
I have some garden cress, which is really nice too. Again, the idea of texture, the idea of adding different notes of texture to things, this is perfect. So I'm just going to drop a few little pieces touching the terrain, around the terrain. Don't need too much, but it adds color. It adds a little playful bite. Radish sprouts are nice, garden cress, and really, that's all we need. I happen to really think that salmon, because of the richness of flavor, because of the lusciousness of the fat in the, in the meat, you want to find ways to get little interesting vegetable notes working with the salmon. Uh, pickled vegetables, things with a little bit of crisp, uh, maybe a little avocado, things that will help really uh, accentuate or really contrast with, with the salmon. So why don't we make uh, a salmon roll. I've got a couple pieces of smoked salmon. And you can get great salmon, a whole side of salmon, pre-sliced salmon, comes either way. I'm going to lay these out. And we're going to make a little bit of this wonderful pickled cucumber mixture, hot and sour cucumber. That's all this is. We have cucumber that's been thinly sliced, a little bit of red onion, macerated in a little pickling brine. Let me show you how we make that. Got a cucumber that's been cut in half. I've got the seeds in here. We definitely want to remove the seeds. Leaving the skin on is optional. You get a nice color as well. You get a little beautiful green color. It, it, also, it also helps keep the, the final product a little firmer. The skin doesn't break down quite as rapidly as the uh, cucumber meat itself. So by leaving the skin on, it just keeps it a little bit firmer. We're going to take this now and just slice it very, very thinly. I, I don't like to go too thin when I cut this because we do want to keep a little bit of the texture, a little bit of the integrity of, of the vegetable intact. If it's too thin, it'll almost turn into something that loses all of its identity. So we're going to add the little pieces of cucumber. And we need a little onion product. Maui onion, Bermuda onion, which is what we have here, the red onion, uh, Vidalia onion. Any onion that's got uh, maybe a little bit more of a sweet uh, quality to it is really nice for this. It's going to add a little bit of a bite, but not too much of a bite. And all we need to do is, again, like the cucumber, paper thin slices. Not, not too thin, but thin enough. And we're going to just add these, mix them together. This can be done days in advance, certainly hours in advance. You can get that out of the way. I always try to imagine what steps can be done beforehand so that when I'm entertaining, I'm also, I know I'm going to be opening wine. I know I'm going to be greeting everybody. So at the last minute, if I can have a lot of things done, it's going to make it a little easier for me. I've got some pickling liquid here. This is a, a sweet, hot, sour mixture. Rice wine vinegar mixed with water, a little bit of sugar dissolved. A little bit of ginger, some spices, some chili peppers. So it's got a nice little bite to it. You can control that bite, that heat, to the degree that you like it. I, I want this to have a little bit of kick because I'm not, it's going to almost add an element, almost a sauce-like element. So when you bite into this, you'll taste that heat. You'll get that sauce. So there we go. We're going to let that sit for several hours. And when that's ready, this is what we have. A little hot and sour cucumber mixture. I'm just going to lay it in along the base here. You know, you could make this even a little bit more rustic or a little more earthy by adding some thin slices of wild mushroom, shiitake mushroom if you want. That might be great in the fall. As the weather starts to turn cold, a little bit of mushroom in here will just make it a little bit richer. So now all we do is roll these up into literally little bite-sized packages, two bites. That's all we, all we need. Perfect for a little reception. So let's get our serving tray. And we're able to just set these out one by one. There we go. So we've got some salmon rolls. You know, the other thing that's really easy to make, really quick to make, we have, uh, everyone's heard of beef tartare or even tuna tartare. We can just as easily make some salmon tartare. I've got a couple, again, a couple sheets of salmon, pre-sliced, ready to go. And I'm just going to chop this up real quick. I don't want to cut it up too fine because I like to really enjoy some of the texture. So I'm just going to cut it into strips and then go back. This is sort of a coarse dice of salmon. Real quick, simple. We're going to be able to mix this, put it in a mixing bowl here and mix it with whatever flavoring elements we desire. Because of the richness of the flesh, 
of the meat, we want to maybe add a little bit of onion. I have a shallot here. Onion's nice because we, we get a little bit of a bite, which helps cut into the, the sweet, rich flesh of the fish. You know, that's, food has to appeal on a lot of different levels. Food is about sustenance, it's about eating, but it, with a little bit of effort, we can make this really, really interesting. We can make this a much more sensual experience. And that's, when I'm putting something like this together, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just, I'm already imagining flavors. I'm eating this before I'm eating it, if you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in my mind's palate, I'm taking a bite of this stuff, and I'm saying, gosh, the salmon is gonna melt away, and I want a little bit of onion in there, and I just wanna get it, uh, I wanna get a little bit of, uh, now a little caper, a little kind of pickled note to it, a little, little crunch from these capers, caper berries. Cornichons would be great too if we want to add those. We're just going to chop them a little bit, fold them in. I'll add a little bit of olive oil for a little richness here. This will also help me keep everything bound together, the olive oil. So we'll just stir that up. If we want to add color, herb would be great. We've got some uh, chervil couple chervil leaves. We're going to mince these up. Don't want to cut up the chervil too fine. As with all herbs, if we can cut them at the last possible moment rather than cutting them too far in advance, you're going to be much better off. Let me try this and very close. Just a little bit of salt. Don't a little bit of pepper, I should say. We already have salt, I think, from the smoked fish itself. There's salt, but the, the capers provide a little bit of salt, so just a little twist of pepper is all we need. So that's ready to go. I've got some brioche croutons. I can cut these into any shape, a round shape or a square shape, but a little rectangle. Whole wheat works great also, as does just a simple cracker. Pumpernickel's also great. So salmon tartare with a little caper flavor and a little bit of onion. And we can maybe make a little quick uh, Japanese type preparation, a little maki roll. So let's take our smoked salmon and lay it out on our sushi rice here, which is sitting on a piece of nori seaweed. Got a few little chives, which we'll add, like the other onion elements that we've used, we'll add a little bit of bite, not too much, also a pretty color. Wasabi, this is made with dried wasabi powder. It's simply reconstituted in a little bit of water. And if, it depends on how hot you like your food. It's like a lot of things. It's completely optional. I happen to like a nice bite with something like this because the rice is so tame, it needs to, I think, have something that'll perk it up a little bit. And wasabi will do that. We're going to add some avocado here, some thin little pieces. Avocado added, adds another element of lushness to this preparation. We'll just place these down here. We could pulp this up and almost make like a guacamole and just smear it in, but we've got some pieces here which are kind of nice. And all we really have to do now is roll this up and, and that's ready to go. And again, this, this is one of those things that can be made a little bit in advance, a couple hours maybe before the guests arrive. Going to be able to take a nice slice here. And we can set these with our other canapes. If I want to give this another little twist too, I've got some wasabi tobiko. Tobiko is the flying fish roe, which just pops in your mouth as you're eating it. And I can just add another little twist and maybe put some on top here. More heat, more texture, just kind of fun. So, you know, we've got certainly a, a way to serve a great little first course with champagne. We've got appetizers, which, which work great. Our salmon roll, our tartare with smoked salmon, and our little uh, maki roll. Thanks for joining us on the Kitchen Sessions. We'll see you next time. <laughs>